morning. Looks like everyone has access to a bulletin. Um, we've got more paper bulletins in the back if you need it. Welcome to those who are uh, virtually with us on Facebook this morning or watching another time. Uh, we are worshiping together in all times and in all places. Blessed be God, holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. Blessed be God, Trinity, and the earth. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all the sides are open. From you, the secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify you. Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O God, to trust in you with all our heart. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Proverbs. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause and despoils of life those who despoil them. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Let's read in unison Psalm 125. They who trust in God are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands fast forever. The hills stand about Jerusalem. So does God stand round about the people. From this time forth forevermore, the scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over land allotted to the just, so that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness, O God, to those who are good, and to those who are true of heart. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, God will lead them away with the evildoers, but peace be upon Israel. A reading from James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of what he is wearing, do you say to the one with the fine clothes, have a seat here, please? While to the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom he has promised 
to those who love them. But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the law according to the scriptures. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And if you choose partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Seraphonician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then Jesus said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found the child lying in the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears and spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Father, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise
in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you uh, this morning. I'm David Celery, the um, Canon for Congregational Mission with the Diocese of North Carolina. Um, and Helen, I want to thank you for the kind invitation to be here uh, this morning, so thank you for that. Um, and also, uh, I did want to note that I, I suspect probably many of you received uh, the news that I believe went out last uh, Wednesday afternoon um, that Helen uh, and the vestry have made a mutual decision uh, to end her pastoral relationship with St. Luke's. I believe a, a joint statement uh, was released uh, earlier in the week, and I understand and can certainly appreciate uh, and feel deeply, deeply sorry if you're learning about this uh, this morning uh, in the context of this service, but I just, I, I, I wanted to name that and can certainly uh, appreciate the wide range uh, of feelings uh, associated with such an announcement. The vestry of St. Luke's and the Diocese of North Carolina, particularly Bishop Sam, as well as other diocesan staff, will be walking alongside of you during this time and are open to hear from you show and, and are here for you, whatever concerns that you might raise during this time of transition. So again, just to reiterate that the congregation will be cared for particularly through Bishop Sam's ministry, uh, as well as a variety of diocesan staffers, uh, the vestry, uh, and of course your membership, one, one with another to walk with one another during, during this time. I know that's a lot to hear, and I can certainly appreciate that. And as I said in my introduction, um, that I'm a canon for congregational mission, and I'd probably say one of my first missions that I probably should have said at the front end is to bring you very, very warm greetings from Bishop Sam and Bishop Ann. Who I want you to know are holding all of you in St. Luke's in their prayers and bring you very prayerful fond wishes on this day. I believe the announcement noted that Bishop Sam and Canon Catherine Massey will be here Tuesday evening to meet uh, with the vestry and they will begin to sort of talk about next steps in terms of what that transition may look like, including plans for clergy to be here on Sundays and to assist you in terms of leading worship uh, and partnering with your parish leaders in terms of providing uh, pastoral care and other needs during this transition. And that's, that's a lot, and I can appreciate it. I thought for a brief moment, I would just sort of tell you a little bit about the arc of, of my work and focus before we jump into a bit about the gospel, which is the most important uh, work, I guess, of what we're all about. So at Bishop Sam's uh, invitation and direction, a lot of my work focuses on what I like to say is leading a 21st century uh, team of evangelists, both clergy and laity, who are bringing the hope and the joy of the risen Christ to God's people and parish families across the diocese. And specifically, we work with parish leadership, parish leaders to help guide them on their road to becoming beloved community. And in this ministry, I've learned to lean a lot on the Holy Spirit, to lean into the Holy Spirit a lot, in God's particular various roles as God the Sustainer, or even God the 
problem solve. And in that light, I look at our role as serving the servants of God in the form of parish leaders. That's sort of our job, to work with parish leaders as they discern where God is leading them, as they fix on purpose and greater direction, as they move from vision into action. I think the job is exhilarating, but it's deeply, deeply humbling. Working with the followers of Jesus on today's challenges to our faith and seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit in all things and at all times to meet those challenges. And yes, problem solving is one of the vital pieces of our work and ministry, addressing conflicts that emerge from deeply held convictions and providing a forum for loving restitution and supporting all parties when grave conversations have led to difficult and challenging decisions, much like what you're experiencing here. As I noted in the announcement that went out, that there will be several opportunities available for you to bid farewell to Rector Helen, and I encourage you to be on the lookout for those dates and times and to be there or to write a card or a note. I also want to note that our diocese team particularly appreciates to be invited in where there are opportunities like now to stand in that pivotal moment of a community as parish communities become more open to the unknown or wanting to take a step into a deeper awareness of God's presence in their common life. It's hard, hard work. And yes, it's not for the faint of heart. As companions along the way, I believe our diocesan team makes a difference, helping us to attend to our relationship with the sacred of God. Christ and the Holy Spirit, or in whatever way we draw near to the Holy One, who's our guide, and who walks alongside of us in all things. I think the, our team of canons and missioners together with the bishops, who we work as a, as a bridge to the congregations, help to support and encourage and equip the people of God here in the diocese. It's fascinating work, it's exhilarating work. Sometimes it's tiring, but deeply, deeply satisfying the work that we do together that supports our shared ministry, yours and all of ours with our bishops in support of our diocesan priorities. I'd say all of that in the context of this week's gospel our team of canons and missioners are paving the way for each of us to witness the love of God and to walk in that way of becoming beloved community. And as you and I read in Mark's Gospel this morning, well, it's another day and it's another miracle. But today, in the context of the Gospel, is just so different, right, in so many ways. As Helen read that, gospel lesson, we encounter two miracles alongside two very different perspectives of Christ's love. Miracle number one, Jesus drives a demon from a possessed girl. Miracle two, he cures a man's deafness and speech impediment. I think the common lesson of these miracles could be summed up succinctly. We are God's beloved. Let me just say that again. We are God's beloved. You and I are deeply, deeply valued by God. Our life here is a short journey home to God and the obstacles and the infirmities we encounter in the midst of our lives, well, those are opportunities to discover God and to invite God more deeply into the midst of our lives to look for God and to look for opportunities that God is presenting to us in the people, places, and events 
in our daily lives. We might ask the question, where is God in all of this? What is God calling me to? How can I hear and focus on where God may be leaning, leading me? Today's good news of the gospel, well, it starts on a bit of a sour note. Significantly, Jesus is in, we might say, deep gentle, ter Gentile territory, and he's approached by a mother who's deeply, deeply concerned about her daughter. And Jesus rejects her with the traditional chosen people's contempt for the outsider, right? Going so far as to refer to her uh, uh, almost in a, this supplicant role as, as a dog. But I think there's a, a hidden kindness in the rebuke. The woman's reaction is to declare her faith in Christ and her willingness to humble herself to help her daughter. And upon that declaration, Jesus says her faith has made it so. Her daughter is cured in an instant. And well, you might be wondering, well, what's the message of this miracle? Well, I think it's Christ's redeeming grace, right? First promised to the chosen people and is now given to all who come to him in faith. All the way of saying to sort of dramatize God's universal love for all people. Christ very quickly reverses his parochial rebuke and tells the woman that her prayers are answered and that she's justified. And this message, my friends, is repeated over and over again and over to the disciples and to you and me today that Christ. God is walking with us, that God hears our prayers. Our faith is justified too, that we're not to get discouraged by optical, obstacles or rejection. We're called to persist in our faith. And by our example, we're called to share it with everyone whom we meet. We're called to think outside the box, we're called to help bring all God's children home to God, to rest in God's deep and abiding embrace of each and every one of us. Christ then travels on and people bring to him in this second miracle a, a deaf man who has a, a, a speech impediment. And if you think about the, this dual disability, well, it's sometimes a common phenomenon, but I think it's an important piece. As I was thinking about it, I thought that it, there's some truth in that. We need an ear for language, and without that ear, our tongue is tied. And Jesus opens the man's ears, and both his hearing and his speech are restored. I hear an added message in the order of these Gospels. I was thinking about this preparing for today and thought, I have to actively listen to the gospel. I have to hear it before I can talk about it or preach on it. I suspect the same may be true for all of us. We need to hear to listen before speaking. I think there's a subtle danger in Mark's cascade of miracles for many of us, Christ's message, it might be out of sync with our present day realities. As average contemporary Christians, we don't consciously deny miracles, right? We might you know, take them for granted when we take them at all, but we tend to isolate miracles in the context of the long ago and far, far away. And as hard-nosed 21st century inhabitants, what have you done for me lately, I think is the operative question that boils up in our mind's eye. To the cynical, the distracted, the bored, Jesus commands, be open. Open your hearts, open your minds, open your senses, open your will to believe. 
In the lyric of Oscar Hammerstein, a hundred million miracles are happening every day. And that's a gross understatement. On the macro scale of miracles, start with the ongoing order of the universe. Intense study of its creation and preservation awed the mind of Einstein to affirm God's hand in the clearly miraculous mechanism of the universe. Follow this up with a closer examination of your own tiny patch of creation. While other religions have mixed positions on miracles, Christianity, our faith is based entirely on a miracle, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Paul says, if Christ be not risen, your faith is worthless. Well, thankfully, the miracle happened. Christ is risen. Your faith and mine, it's priceless. My friends, we can clearly see that in the many micro-miracles that witness the love of the risen Christ in our lives today, in Christ our grudges and resentments miraculously can become forgiveness. It takes work, but it can happen. In Christ, the crushing burden of anger can miraculously be lifted from our hearts. In Christ, our smug pride can miraculously be banished and replaced with serenity. In Christ, our fears and depression blossom into hope and joy. Our faltering faith becomes an unassailable refuge in times of trouble. All these miracles and more and more. Some cynics try to explain these miracles away on a molecular level. They say a state of grace is just an acquired reaction to stimulus, a self-induced endorphin rush. But the guiding hand of God is undeniably evident. A hundred million times a day, when God's people seek and find God's will. And these many, many micro-miracles taken together add up to better lives in the world around us. Commenting on the cumulative effect of these micro-miracles, C.S. Lewis wrote, each miracle writes for us in small letters, something that God has already written in letters almost too large to be noticed across the entire canvas of nature. My friends, in Christ, each one of us is invited to a lifetime of wonders. Another day, another miracle, another day closer to home. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, give to us and to all your people in times of anxiety, serenity. In times of hardship, courage. In times of uncertainty, patience. And in all times of quiet trust in your wisdom and love. For this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was born. For our sake, he was crucified and conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was born. Day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in order to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Earth, the Life, who proceeds from God and the Son, with the Father and the Son, who is worshipped in the world one, who is spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic makes the church. We acknowledge one baptism, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Prayers of the people. Let us pray together, taking, making our request to God, saying, Spirit of the living God, hear us and change us. Gracious God, we pray for peace, accountability, justice, and reconciliation in this land and throughout the world. We pray for basic human rights for all. We pray for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of people on the earth. Spirit of the living God, hear us. We pray for the renewal of the church through deepening faith, love, and service. We pray for Michael, Sam, and Anne, our bishops, for Helen, our rector, for the ministry and mission of St. Luke's and her people. We give thanks for the gift of your word, the grace of your sacraments, and the companionship of your people. Spirit of the living God, hear us in Jesus. We pray for our local community, we pray for all people in their daily life and work. We pray that we may see and respond to the needs of those around us. We give thanks for the gifts of beauty, creativity, skill, and compassion, which enrich our world and our lives. Spirit of the living God, hear us we pray for all who are in need, for the sick, the lonely, the poor, for those living with se severe illness, addiction or trauma, for those who are fatigued and for those who mourn. We pray for those who have died. Spirit of the living God, hear us and change us. We invite you to share your prayers aloud now. We pray for healing, healing of the body, of mind, of spirit, healing of broken relationships, healing in this holy place. And we give thanks for the wonderful ministry among us of our dear Rector Helen. Spirit of the living God, hear us and change us. We pray for all who bring comfort, care, and healing. We give thanks for human love and friendship, and for all that enriches our daily lives. Spirit of the living God, hear us and change us. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people. Strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have 
mind to witness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world we have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only you. Now, God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Savior. Amen. Peace of Christ be always with you. And now, do not neglect to do good and share what you have. Such sacrifices are pleasing to God. I should just stand for the great thanksgiving. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life, fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You've redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Throughout your, through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy One, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor the image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. So we violated your creation, abused one another, rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks to them, he gave it and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this with remembrance of me. 
Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of all your children, that with saints past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. It's the gifts of God for the people.
take and eat. I invite you to join in the post-communion prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nurturing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, and renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue of life for Christ our Savior. I'd like to uh, invite you to continue standing, and um, Dan, if you would just come up to the front of the altar here, that would be great. So Dan LaVenter has been our uh, diocesan intern for a short time. Uh, it looks like perhaps um, Jim will come uh, lay hands on you as I say the prayer. Um, and as we traditionally do, we will be giving uh, you a prayer shawl to take with you with our prayers. I invite you to pray with us. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the work and witness of your service, Dan, who has enriched this community and brought gladness to his friends and family. Now bless and preserve him at this time of transition. Guide him in the continued use of your gifts. Give him sustenance for temporal and spiritual needs, friends to cheer the way, and clear vision of the ministry to which you are now calling him. By your Holy Spirit be present in the pilgrimage that he may travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessings be with you. blessings for all of us. May the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen. We are St. Luke's Episcopal Church, nurtured in Jesus. We welcome radically, serve gratefully, and love abundantly. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord.